What's going on guys? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. So for today's video, I'm going to be going over why I decided to switch from Final Cut Pro to Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. I'm going to start off by going over a few reasons why I decided to make the switch in the first place and then at the end I'm going to be tacking on a few things that I actually miss about Final Cut Pro. For the past couple of months, I've been going through the grueling process of switching between editing softwares. This was a hard change for me. It took a while. It was pretty depressing at points and a lot of times I just want to quit. Now I know a lot of my audience probably isn't that interested in editing softwares and things like that, but I want to make an exception for this video because if there is anyone out there who's trying to make a switch or thinking about making a switch, I hope this video will shed some light on the issue and help you come to your decision. So there are really three main reasons why I decided to switch from Final Cut Pro to the Adobe products. The first reason is because of plugins. Now this point might not be what you think it is, so just bear with me for a second. But Final Cut Pro is what I call at least, I don't know if this is the perfect professional term, but I call it a base software. So all Final Cut Pro really is, is a base software with a few tools here and there that are helpful, but it's mostly just a base for me to build off of. What I use to build on top of Final Cut Pro is plugins. Now for those who don't know, a plugin is sort of an addition to your software. There are plugins for pretty much any effect you can imagine. But the problem is, for the vast majority of plugins, they cost money, and they're not exactly cheap either. The main place that I got my plugins was from a website called Pixel Film. Studios, and that company creates amazing plugins for Final Cut Pro. Super user friendly, super easy to use, professional. They look good, but each plugin pack costs roughly $30. And that's a pretty steep price, especially for someone like me. Now, you can buy plugins for Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects, but they aren't nearly as necessary as they are to Final Cut Pro. If you're using Premiere Pro, you can just use the dynamic link between Premiere Pro and After Effects, and then you can just create the transitions and effects in After Effects and then bring them back into Premiere Pro. But after a while, buying plugins was not only eating into my wallet, it was just getting frustrating and annoying, and I was just fed up with having to buy plugins for the simplest of effects. So that's the first reason why I decided to check Final Cut Pro and become part of the hashtag Adobe Squad. The next reason why I switched softwares is because of the professionality of the Adobe products. Premiere Pro and After Effects is more widely accepted in the professional videographer world than Final Cut Pro. For the most part, if you're a freelance videographer or a filmmaker of some sort or just an editor, the people that you're working with, you're clients are a lot of times going to want you to be able to use Premiere Pro and After Effects. It's pretty much just the most widely accepted professional editing software out there. So that's the second reason why I decided to switch. Now the third reason why I decided to switch is fairly specific, but it's also a pretty big deal, and that is tracking. In Final Cut Pro, you really can't do any tracking at all unless you're manually tracking with keyframes. But in After Effects, you can easily do 2D tracking or you can use Mocha AE and you can do 3D tracking. Alright, the fourth reason is pretty straightforward, but it's just because of the learning resources for the Adobe products. Once again, Final Cut Pro is just not as widely accepted as the Adobe products. And because of that, there are far more tutorials and learning resources out there, so it's just a lot easier to learn new effects, to find new effects, to add into your videos if you use the Adobe products. Alright, so those are the main reasons why I decided to switch, but now that we've gone over that, I want to bring up a few things that I actually miss about Final Cut Pro. I might have bashed a little bit on Final Cut Pro, but that software is still my baby. I used that for so long, and it will always have a soft spot in my heart. Now, I am still a new user to Premiere Pro, so some of these tools might actually exist in Premiere Pro, and I probably just don't know about it yet. So if you do know that these tools actually exist, comment down below and let me know, because it would be super helpful for me to know how to do these things in Premiere Pro. The first is a complete magnetic timeline. Now, you might be saying, whoa, 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 there is a magnetic timeline. You just have to click the magnet or hold shift in Premiere Pro and there's a magnetic timeline. There you go. Well, that is a magnetic timeline, but it's not, as I refer to it, a complete magnetic timeline. When you go to cut in Premiere Pro, most people hit C. I actually use B because I changed the keystroke to be more like Final Cut Pro, but I would cut the clip and then I go over and then cut in another spot, select it, and then hit delete. The problem that I have is that the gap between those two clips is not conjoined. Those two clips do not snap back together without me having to do anything. In Final Cut Pro, if you delete a clip in between two clips, the gap you create is automatically filled by the two other clips. Clip length is not extended, they just snap together. And for me personally, this is what I miss the most. It just makes editing so much faster. I just wish there was a spot in Premiere Pro where you could toggle it on and off. The next thing that I miss about Final Cut Pro is the in-software library that Final Cut Pro has. In Final Cut Pro, it was just nice to have this little library where I could go through and organize videos, organize projects, go in between different projects really easily and really quickly. And then it was also really nice because I could save like sound effects. I created like my own sound effects library in Final Cut Pro. So I didn't have to go into Finder, I didn't have to search for 
for it on my computer every time I needed a sound effect I could just go into that little folder I created in Final Cut Pro and snag the sound effect from there. The last thing that I miss about Final Cut Pro is pretty straightforward and simple it's just the render time. I don't know if it's because Final Cut Pro is a native software to Apple products and I'm using a Mac but for some reason the Final Cut Pro render time is far superior to that of the Adobe products. I mean far superior and it's not a huge deal at least not for me it's just something you have to get used to. But alright everyone, so that is going to be it for today's video. I'm not going to make too many more videos like this actually, but this was just something that was on my mind, I've been thinking a lot about, and I wanted to talk to my peeps about it. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed, be sure to do that, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.